So the lounge has a fridge. And now we got a stove. Is somebody moving in here? Nope. <laughs> What's up dudes, welcome back. Before I get into explaining to you why there's a stove sitting here, which will all make sense in a minute, I just wanna show you a quick look over the El Camino. What I've been up to since you last saw like the update videos and stuff, you guys know where we're at now. I have continued, I started filming again. That will be released later on, so hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything, but I'm just gonna show you guys real quick what I've done in the last little bit. With the tunnel for the drive shaft and the rear firewall. Now it's not perfect, I still have to go through and do the final touches and fine tuning and whatnot, but you can see in the back that it's pretty good. I got some spots where there's a little bit of holes coming through that I didn't really want, but at least now it's somewhat there, so moving on. I can start figuring out where my seats are gonna sit. I still have to make the harness bar across the back right here for the seatbelt harnesses. The cage is all inside. It's looking pretty cool. Gotta do something with the floors now. I started making the skeleton for the trans tunnel. I'd like to make that removable so that it's easy to work on, but we'll see what happens. Probably the very next thing, now that I have this done, I can start working on the brace for the diff and then the rear section of the cave cage. <laughs> It's gonna come back from here, go down there. I'm gonna build like a bumper and a fuel cell mounting spot back here. That'll probably be next. The reason I wanted to get that firewall piece done was so that when I do put the cage and everything else in the back here, I don't have to crawl around underneath there anymore and look around for stuff, you know what I mean? So I tucked up the wires here around the PlayStation and everything that goes to the TV. Those were hanging down kind of loose. I didn't like that. I moved over the drill press and the grinder. There was a table here. It's now way over there in the corner of the shop, back behind all that stuff there. You can't really see it, but it doesn't matter. I wanted access to this, the bead blaster. I might take it out and clean it up, maybe paint it, who knows? So that's nice and clean. I took the PA system down off the top of this cabinet and put it up here in the corner where it's out of the way. And then it, uh, I just, I want it out of the way. Now this cabinet, I'm gonna have to move over a little bit to make room over there for this stove. The reason it's gotta be over there is the 220 plug is in that corner and we're gonna have to use the 220 plug to operate. So I gotta get the cleaning up and stuff around here and get things organized because it's way better to have an organized shop. It's more like get more peace of mind, you know what I mean? Like you feel better about working on stuff. You don't get it easily distracted or disorganized or this like, you know, discouraged. That's the word, discouraged. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean up a little bit and then we'll get back to you guys because uh, we'll talk about that stuff. So this, this in case you guys were wondering, is for powder coating. We found a stove. Totally slightly used, totally slightly used, but it should do the trick for what we got to do. Now, steve is gonna be here tomorrow. He's got a powder coating machine. That stove right there was the last piece of the puzzle. That's what we needed to start doing stuff and getting on our way. So tomorrow, I'm gonna set up with him. We're gonna hopefully try to powder coat something. We do have an issue though. That plug is not the same as the stove. As you can see, you just, where is it? Okay, safety first. So check it out. Stove is three prong, the 220 plug is nine. So not sure exactly what the plan is gonna to be to overcome that. I think Steve went and got a plug or some sort of adapter kind of deal. We're either gonna modify the stove or change the plug that's in the wall. Hopefully find something that works for both those things. Moving on, I would really like to get this piping out of the way. There's about 80 feet worth here. That's for the roll cage for the El Camino. <laughs> Pretty long. So that's gonna go into this. And there's probably like, most of it's gonna end up in there. I still have to do the back half of the cage. I've gotta do the door bars. Gotta probably do a whole bunch of work in here. Shock mounts, all kinds of things of the sort. So that's something I would like to get out of the way, but there's also a lot of other stuff I gotta get out of the way before Steve-O shows up. So I'm just gonna work on that.
All right, so we begin our day today. Good morning, Steve's here. Hi, Steve. So we gotta figure this powder coating thing out. Brought all the equipment down. Take the back off this stove. Figure out if we can put power to the regular plug like I showed on the earlier. Uh, check it out. Set up the gun, bunch of equipment stuff, put some powder, get some wheels to modify the bottom of this thing. Power this thing up, take it off the back and figure out where the wires go. Make it a duck. A lot of wires, that doesn't help at all. <laughs> like figuring these ones. That's the yeah, that's the bottom one. Here. Yeah, we'll take off the rest and see where all the Yeah. This is probably to the thermometer. The unplug, right? Well like, will that unplug because it's gotta it's gotta come out this hole if we take the back off. Oh yeah. Puzzle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. We got sheet metal. We'll make it cool. <laughs> She's gonna take it all apart. We won't know what the hell does what. Just let the wires hanging out. Guys, all right, so we are, whoa, it's windy. We are back from the nine to five, and I'm terribly sorry, but this video was basically, uh, this video was a bust. I had all kinds of stuff going on and planned out for this, but we got in here, we got to work. I gotta turn the lights on. We, uh, I'm just gonna show you what's up with that stove and what was going on and what we did and give you a really quick rundown of what happened. As you can see here, we got a stove set up. It's all wired up, plugged in now, works. And this is the reason. We are now power, <laughs> power coating? Yeah. We are now powder coating. So check this out. This is the piece that we just did. We did it as a trial that day. Turned out pretty cool. So we're in business, baby. So anyways, we got this powder coat gun. It's actually Stevo's. And uh, we picked up this stove a couple weeks ago, locally, real cheap. So then of course, it was just a matter of getting it hooked up, getting it plugged in, making it work properly. And uh, Steve and I attempted to wire it up, plug it in, get it going because I have a welder plug in here, not a house plug, which is required for that kind of stove. Because of all the other things that run off of it, it has this thing called a neutral wire, which I guess runs the 120 or whatever it is. And that only takes care of small features like the controls and stuff there. Anyway, Steve and I tried to wire it up. First time around, it lit up like a spaceship and then it started smoking. And then we thought we had the wires backwards or crossed or ran the neutral, like too much power through the little the timer and all that stuff because it all lit up super bright and so the light underneath and it started humming. And then, so we took it apart again. We flipped the wires around. We plugged it in, flipped the switch, and instantly made our own fireworks. So that didn't work out so great either. JM showed up moments later, pretty much pulled a couple of wires off, switched a few things around, dude knew exactly what he was doing. Thank you, brother. And so the stove worked. So what we did was we just took an old piece of, this is old piece of like roller cage piping, leftover stuff, same as, same as this and we test powder coated it and it turned out great. Like it's maybe not great looking here, which you can see, but it's super smooth. It worked out really well. We nailed it first shot. So we 
by the time you're watching this are officially powder coaters. So if you boys are local, you need something done, you know, get at me on the social media and stuff. Let me know, we'll hook something up, we'll get you good prices, good job done. And that's, that's where we're at. So now that we're officially powder coating and I'm working on the El Camino again. It's time to but it's time to pull the race seats and everything out of the RX-7 because I'm gonna need it for the El Camino. I'm gonna bring the RX-7 in now so I can get to work on it straight away tomorrow when I get back from the nine to five and at least to be protected from the weather outside.